it's not just that Israel has pulled out of Khan Yunus, it's that they have pulled the majority of their troops out of Gaza as they prepare to move to the next phase of war, which will likely be more pinpointed attacks. So I think we are seeing a really significant shift here. Now, how that plays out is yet to be seen. I think on the one hand, you have Netanyahu speaking to domestic audiences, asserting over and over again that there will be an operation in Rafah, which many in Israel are now starting to doubt, while at the same time pulling out troops to prepare for what could be a breakthrough in ceasefire talks as part of Hamas's demands. So we're really at an inflection point in this war right now where we're seeing a, a shift in Israel's operation. Well, should we doubt whether this invasion takes place now that we have this statement? Carmel, how do you read uh, what Netanyahu is saying, only suggesting that there is a date? I think the question is what that operation is going to look like. So 20 out of the 24 battalions of Hamas's military have been dismantled, and the four that remain are in Rafah. So the question for Israel is what they're going to do, how and when they're going to go into Rafah. Right now, as I had mentioned, the ceasefire talks are really very close, and there is a huge amount of international pressure, including from the White House, which is exerting pressure now in a way that it had not been throughout this war. We've seen a huge shift in U.S. public opinion and thinking about this war and in how the administration is approaching it. And with that, now we're starting to see a shift within the Israeli government as well. Yeah. In part of the statement we got from Netanyahu, not just the suggestion that there is a date for an entry into Rafah, he also said he has gotten a report on those talks in Cairo. He says, we are working all the time for the achievement of our goals. First of all, the return of all of our hostages. And Carmel, as you talk about the international pressure on Netanyahu and the Israeli government right now, it's also worth noting there is domestic pressure as well. Once again, over the weekend, we saw thousands protesting, calling for a deal that would secure the release of those hostages. How should what's happening inside Israel uh, factor into our thinking about Netanyahu's likely moves as we move forward? It's very important. Ultimately, all politics are local. And so you see Netanyahu continually speaking to both sides, both to his far right government, who he's trying to show muscle to and that he will not cower to international pressure, and at the same time is responsive to the thousands of Israelis who are taking to the streets to demand the release of more than 130 hostages. Every day that passes, the number of hostages that are killed grows. It is now believed that about half of those hostages are still alive. And so every day the pressure mounts. I'm glad you mentioned that because there was a, a terrifying story in the Washington Post uh, this morning about families, parents of uh, two boys in this case who they thought two sons uh, were being held hostage hoping for their release for the last six months only to learn uh, that they had died uh, either during their captivity or as they were dragged into Gaza. Carmel, to what extent are families in Israel losing hope? Yeah, there is a huge amount of pain in Israel right now, not just over the hostage situation, but that Netanyahu has yet to deliver on many of the fundamental promises he made about this war. That includes dismantling Hamas. And while he's made significant military gains, Hamas still remains in power in Gaza. The hostages have not been released. There is a huge amount of pain and suffering. More than 250 Israeli soldiers have been killed in this war in Gaza. And many Israelis feel that they are neither, they're, they're not winning. Um, and so Netanyahu is under pressure to prove that that's not the case, while at the same time to try to retain his position of power, which is becoming increasingly challenged. Well, as there is still, as, as you have rightly alluded to, a ongoing threat from Hamas, there are st still battalions that have not been dismantled. There also, Carmel, though, might be more of a threat from Iran directly, not just from an Iranian po proxy like Hamas. We have heard in recent days that Israel's military is prepared to respond to a scenario that could develop if Iran retaliates for the strike on uh, the embassy in Damascus earlier this month. What could we see from Iran? Do you think we could actually see some form of retaliation from Iran directly rather than this being done through proxies as we have seen in the past? Yeah, I think the stakes around Iranian retaliation right now are incredibly high for two reasons. One, the timing is going to matter a lot. Because the Israelis and Hamas are so close to a ceasefire agreement, 
anything that, Hama- that Iran does right now could potentially derail that. So that's the first thing to keep an eye on. The second thing that we're looking at is whether or not Iran is going to escalate. There have been dozens upon dozens of attacks emanating from Hezbollah, also on U.S. assets across the region. And similarly, Israeli attacks on Iranian assets, including those that have increasingly targeted the IRGC and the Iranians directly. And we've seen that throughout the war. But up until this point, it's really been at a, a relatively low simmer. It's been kind of this, this medium, medium heat, if you will. So the question now for Iran is whether or not they're going to increase that temperature. Most likely what we're going to see is some kind of attack on Israeli or American assets overseas. I think the scenario in which they would attack on Israeli soil remains pretty low, but would mark a significant escalation in this conflict. So where does this actually play out then? Is it in Syria itself? Uh, Are we at sea, Carmel, or does that have yet to present itself? It really has yet to present itself, and the Iranians have many options, and that includes everything from embassies or Israel's diplomatic presence overseas in countries as far-reaching as you know Latin America or Europe, where the Israelis have already put their staff on alert. We could also be looking at U.S. assets in the seas, and the U.S. has, of course, been working to tamp down on Houthi attacks. Um, and has done so relatively successfully in recent months. So we could see really in any of these arenas, um, Iran really playing up its role and and going after, again, either the U.S. or um, the Israelis directly. 